Hi, this is my video entry for the discussion of the week. Um, I really enjoyed the readings for this week, uh, mostly because it, they helped me understand what the class is about and I can apply them to work, which is what I'm going to have um, the most, uh, I guess you could say, benefit out of this class um, is for work. Um, I mean, after all, we're trying to benef benefit our careers, so that's what I'm trying to apply it now. Um, so I chose three topics to talk about um, for the discussion, and uh, the first topic comes from the article that was um, on Canvas, The Social Intelligence, A Key to Success, um, by Catherine Joseph and Sri Sai Lakshmi. I hope that's how you pronounce it. Um, I really liked this article because I felt like they were... I felt like the categories were really nicely um, divided, I guess you could say. So what I want to talk about is the essential characteristics of social intelligence. Um, reading this, I noticed I was um, judging a lot of people that I know and how their social intelligence measures up to the essential characteristics, um, as well as myself. Uh, but according to um, the article, and according to Kosmitsky and John, um, and it's insight quotation, um, uh, they describe a socially intelligent person as one who uh, understands people's thoughts and feelings. Um, they have uh, knowledge of the norms of human uh, relations. They're good at uh, taking the perspective of, of other people. So I always think of that as like the golden rule. Uh, social intelligence is a lot. Um, it's not just emotional intelligence mixed together with, um, you know, IQ, as I was reading, um, that had a lot to do with each other. Uh, but I really liked uh, reading this because it's saying that the socially aware person is mature enough and responsible enough to understand uh, another person's perspective. Um, but they listed a lot of different uh, points and I really liked that as well um, one set you know was adapting well in social situations um, for referencing the questions in the discussion post uh, to apply this to my job now is extremely helpful um, I've been trying to do this more on my own anyway um, because if something goes wrong in my job it is my um, Sometimes I panic and I stress out, um, but I'm doing much better at just calming down and and not um, and being more aware of how I talk to people when I'm in those stressful situations. So I really liked that. Um, and then the I thought it was interesting how it says is warm and caring in this section, and you wouldn't think that that would be you'd think that would be uh, more of a uh, personality characteristic instead of just a social intelligence but then it started connecting where I was thinking more so along the lines of uh, people's emotions and that does connect to the social intelligence so I that was a what I definitely learned and what I can use in the future in a leadership position um, also in this topic um, in social intelligence by Carl Albrecht or Albrecht um, he describes in there that characteristics of social intelligence are not just considerate cooperative skills. Um, it's a deeper knowledge of what works and what doesn't work in any social situation. And you learn that through life skills and through the wisdom that you accumulate as a person, as a human in this world. So it's not just, oh, that person has to be cooperative and that person that person gets along with everybody. It's not just that. It's it's way deeper than just people skills, which is what I really liked about that part of it. Um, you have to understand how people work. It's not just, oh, I'm able to say hi and talk to people and bring up any conversation. You have to know what that, think about what that person's going through at the time, um, connect it back to them, not just, I could strike up a conversation with anybody. It's emotionally connecting to that person. Um, and the second topic I wanted to talk about was the multiple intelligences. So according to Carl Albrecht in the Social Intelligence book, um, 
Howard Gardner made the model of multiple intelligences, which I really like this concept. I talked about it in my intro video that we all have a different kind of smart. And um, that was, you know, part of the title of this first part. Um, but there are various proportions of different intelligences in different people. So he named um, the intelligences there, uh, Albrecht summarized them into these six categories, abstract intelligence, social intelligence, practical intelligence, um, physical or kinesthetic intelligence, aesthetic intelligence, um, and emotional intelligence. So um, he kind of summarized them into that, but it's saying that not everybody has the same kind of intelligence and we are only going to focus on the social intelligence, but in order to focus on that, we have to know all of the intelligences. So I, I really liked that, um, you know, he said, we all desire all the intelligences, but, um, we, you know, you can, you can be one greater in one social, you can be greater in one intelligence than, um, another, and that's okay. That's all right. But we, you know, another part of the book, it was talking about, um, improving ourselves in social intelligence. Um, the third uh, topic I want to talk about is the filters and the blind spots and I am talking about that because I noticed the um, pattern in uh, social intelligence by Carl Albrecht and the executive president presence executive presence by Harrison Monarth um, I when I read both of them you know I realized they connected and so I thought that was a good topic to talk about um, uh, in Albrecht, uh, he says that um, our filters selectively, or quote, our filters selectively exclude or rearrange various aspects of reality to suit our existing brain patterns, end quote. So that's on page 15. Um, we are going to filter in our lives. It's just, it's just a habit. It's a thing we, we should filter in our lives. Now, people with autism, children with autism especially, they don't know how to filter. Um, and I personally think that some people should not filter as much as they do. Um, uh, I'm trying to be better at that because sometimes I just try to please people instead of filtering what I really need to say to them. So I'm trying to get better in that sense. It can go both ways. Um, but then I also read here, quote, these blind spots, lenses, and filters operate dynamically. Uh, so, end quote. They shift uh, from moment to moment, any situation, any expectation, you're going to change your filter. You're going to change your blind spot. It's kind of like walking on, on the street and ignoring a homeless person. Um, you can either, ch I don't really like to ignore them. Um, I'll give them, you know, anything. If they want, however they want to spend their money, that's their business. Um, but a dollar off my nose is not going to hurt anybody. That's what I teach in my uh, children's church class and I know that's getting more into the per personal values, but it's it's kind of like that. Are you choosing to ignore the person? Do you want to filter it out or leave it in your blind spot? It could be a homeless person. It could be um, something on the ground that you're trying to ignore, uh, like litter. A lot of people ignore that. So just something like that. I, I thought that was really neat um, and connecting with it. And so that connects to the executive presence on uh, page... Let me make sure I have the right. On page 12, when he starts talking about filters and lenses, um, he, throughout it, starts talking about belief systems. Um, and that's just representing the worldview of how you think, how you view it, the world as you view it. Um, it gets kind of murky because when uh, belief systems, they're closely aligned with personal values. And that's when filtering can become a problem or not a problem. So, you know, with my personal values, I don't think you should ignore the homeless person. Uh, but in some cases, you might know that they're swindling or, and you might choose to ignore them. So just, just as an example. Um, but on page 14 um, in Executive Presence, he says, quote, closely aligned with belief systems is the filter of personal values. Values grade things as good or bad, worthy or unworthy, appropriate or inappropriate, and dictate a memo defining how one should feel about the sensory input being processed, end quote. 
So basically, you know, we're, it's good and bad. It's your personal values. So I, I really, this, this subject is going to get into that a lot, um, which is kind of referencing back to the questions in the discussion. Uh, we're going to have that happen in our leadership positions and any positions in work. Our values are going to mix in with our work. They're supposed to. That's just how life goes. That's how work goes or professional um, professionalism is. Uh, so I really thought that was um, a good, some good three, three good topics to talk about um, as a discussion uh, because you know, I'm wanting to know what everybody else thinks or what everybody else thinks is the most important part of this or how they're, how they're going to apply it to their personal lives. Like personally, I'm just, I'm trying to get better at saying no and standing up for myself, um, socially, you know, I'm so used to having people or just doing what I, other people want that I'm trying to get better at it. So personally, that's my decision, but, um, as far as my future goes and as a professional, that's what I want to do is uh, learn learn how to socially speak to other people and about my problems or about what I'm thinking or my ideas, not just take it from whoever I, I'm listening to or whoever my supervisor is. So I'm hoping leadership position would help me with that. Um, my position now at work is not very good at leadership or it's, it's an assistant. So I always belittle myself and I don't need to do that, but I hope those topics uh, were helpful and I'm excited to hear what everybody thinks. Thanks.